In this video, I want to talk about reflection versus refraction. But the key idea to realize is that mirrors reflect light, while glasses and lenses refract light. For example, let's say we have this ray of light hit this mirror. What's going to happen? Well, again, we know mirrors reflect light, so the light's going to be reflected. However, what if we have a ray of light hit this glass, this lens? Well, again, we know glasses and lenses refract light, so this light is going to be refracted into this lens. So the key difference is in reflection, the ray of light started in the air and it ended up in the air. However, in refraction, the ray of light started in the air, but then it entered into a lens. So it changed mediums. It entered into a new medium. So that's the primary difference between reflection and refraction. Reflection, the ray of light stays in the same medium. Refraction, the ray of light enters a new medium. However, in order to truly understand reflection and refraction, first we need to understand how physicists have decided to characterize incident rays of light. And an incident ray of light just means the initial ray of light that hits a medium. So how do physicists characterize these rays of light? Do we characterize it by this particular angle it has towards the medium? Or do we characterize it by this particular angle? Or maybe this particular angle? Well, what's important to realize is the convention that physicists have decided to use is to first find the normal line, this perpendicular line that's 90 degrees from the medium. So that's the first step. And then the second step is to find the angle between the incident ray of light and that normal line, that perpendicular line. For example, we see this angle is 55 degrees. So we refer to this angle as the angle of incidence, the angle that the incident light has to the perpendicular line. So that's the convention that physicists have decided to use whenever we characterize an incident ray of light. For example, these are a few examples. If we have an incident ray of light that comes at this angle, how do we characterize it? Well, we characterize it by this angle of incidence, this 15 degree angle. Because again, it's the angle between the incident ray of light and the normal line, this perpendicular line. How would we characterize this ray of light? Well, again, we find the perpendicular line, the normal line, and then we find the angle. This angle is 60 degrees. So this is an angle of incidence of 60 degrees. So that's how we characterize this ray of light. So again, physicists have decided to use this convention, this particular angle, whenever we're trying to characterize any ray of light. So let's try an example. Let's say we have this incident ray of light that hits this mirror. What's going to happen? Well, we know mirrors reflect light. However, how do we characterize this incident light? And how would we characterize this reflected light? Well, again, we know how we do this. First, we create the perpendicular line, which we call the normal line. And then we need to find the angle of these rays of light relative to this perpendicular line. For example, how would we characterize this incident light? Well, again, we would find the angle that this incident light makes with this perpendicular normal line. So we see this is an angle of 55 degrees. So therefore, this incident light has an angle of incidence of 55 degrees. So if we wanted to describe this ray of light to a fellow physicist, we would say this incident ray of light has an angle of incidence of 55 degrees. That's the convention that physicists use. However, we also have this reflected light. So how would we characterize this reflected light? Well, again, we always find the angle that the light has relative to this perpendicular line, this normal line. So we would find that this angle is 55 degrees. So therefore, this reflected light has an angle of reflection of 55 degrees. And that's how we would characterize this reflected light. And that's the terms in which we would talk and speak about this reflected light. However, notice this angle of incidence was 55 degrees. And this angle of reflection was also 55 degrees. And that's not a coincidence. The angle of incidence will always equal the angle of reflection. And that's just the law of reflection. That's just something you simply have to memorize. And this will always be true. So we could have a different example. Maybe we have this ray of light 
and we know we would find the angle that the ray of light has with this normal line. And we would see this has an angle of incidence of 10 degrees. So therefore, if the angle of incidence is 10 degrees, therefore the angle of reflection is also 10 degrees because the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. That's the law of reflection. That will always be true. But let's try another example. Let's say we have this instant ray of light that runs into this glass lens. What's gonna happen? Well, we know glass and lenses, they refract light. So this instant light is going to be refracted into this glass lens. So that would look like this. However, how would we characterize this incident light and how would we characterize this refracted light? Well, again, we know the first step is to find the perpendicular line, this normal line that makes a 90 degree angle with the material we're interested in. So that's the first step. So now the next step is to find the angle. So we would find the angle between this incident light and this perpendicular line, this normal line. And we would see this angle is 55 degrees. So therefore this ray of light, this incident light has an angle of incidence of 55 degrees. But then we know it gets refracted into this lens. So now we have this refracted light. So how would we characterize this refracted light? Well, again, whenever you're characterizing any ray of light, again, first step is to find that normal line, that perpendicular line. Then you need to find the angle between the ray of light you're interested in and that normal line. So this has an angle of 20 degrees. So therefore this refracted light has an angle of refraction of 20 degrees. And that's how you would characterize this refracted light. However, notice that this angle of instance does not equal the angle of refraction. So that's counter to reflection because we know whenever light is reflected, the angle of instance equals the angle of reflection. However, in refraction, the angle of instance usually does not equal the angle of refraction. And this is usually the case, and there are a few rare exceptions, but in most situations, this angle of instance will not equal the angle of refraction. So again, to summarize, if we have this instant ray of light hit this mirror, what's gonna happen? Well, we know mirrors reflect light, but how exactly is it going to reflect light? Well, again, we know this angle of instance always equals the angle of reflection. So therefore, we can predict how this ray of light will be reflected and the angle in which it will be reflected. However, if we have an instant ray of light hit this glass lens, what's going to happen? Well, again, we know it's going to be refracted into this glass lens. However, what's going to be that angle of refraction? Is it going to look like this? Or will it look like this? How can we predict this angle of refraction and how this instant ray of light is going to be refracted into this glass lens. Well, to determine that, you need to use Snell's law, where you need to know the index of refraction of this air and this glass. So in the next video, we're gonna learn about Snell's law and I have a link of that video below.